what's up guys, Shane Stars here. I've got the MacBook Pro 13 inch M1 and I'm loving this MacBook. It's actually a ton faster than this MacBook. This is my MacBook that I've had forever. This is my late 2013 MacBook Pro and it's really served me well over the last seven years. Some issues that I've been having with this laptop is that I constantly run out of storage. It only came with 128 gigabyte SSD and of course the battery won't keep a charge after seven years. Other world computing was nice enough to send out a two terabyte hard drive and an all new battery for the MacBook Pro 2013. I'm going to go ahead and swap those out and get this all fixed up for my kids so that they've got a really nice laptop to do all their schoolwork while they're at home. Let's go ahead and get started. This video is sponsored by iBanky. My MacBook Pro is a powerhouse and I'm able to get a lot done. The only thing holding it back are these two USB-C ports. If you need more ports to get more work done, iBanky has you covered with the Docking Station Pro. The dual USB-C ports are designed exclusively for Apple laptops, meaning this is going to be a plug and play solution with no drivers needed. Support for up to two 4K 60 Hertz displays with extended mode means you're gonna be able to see everything that you need to do all at once. You don't have to skip charging while using this dock as it includes 96 watt laptop charging, charging up even the beefiest 16 inch MacBook Pro at full speed. It also includes 18 watt PD port to charge up your phone at the same time. This dock takes your MacBook's two ports and turns them into 12 ports, including SD and TF card slots and a dual HDMI 2.0 ports. This is going to meet all of your work needs. If you need the perfect solution for expansion on the two USB-C ports on your MacBook Pro, look no further than iBanky. I'll be sure to include a link in the description of where you can pick up the iBanky Docking Station Pro today. I did have to upgrade my Mac OS. It has to be at least Mac OS 10.13 or higher to be compatible with this SSD. So I went on ahead and took care of that. All right, so we do want to make a backup. I'm gonna jump into the settings and I'm going to go into Time Machine. All right, so I'm gonna select my Samsung T3. I'm gonna go ahead and erase it so that we can use it for our backup. All right, so once we have selected our hard drive, we're gonna go ahead and make our backup. We'll use that backup on our new SSD to reinstall the operating system. Okay, my backup is complete. I'm gonna go ahead and shut down the MacBook. Okay, so the battery comes with a battery replacement kit. And one of the things that's included here is a towel. So we're gonna put the towel over our keyboard in between the keyboard and the screen. That way we don't get any leakage uh, from the adhesive remover. We don't want that to get into our keyboard and damage things. So we'll go ahead and put that in place. And then we can turn over the MacBook and get into this thing. So I'm gonna actually probably go ahead and replace the battery while I go in there and replace the SSD. Okay, so we're gonna remove these top two screws first because apparently they are the smallest. So we'll go ahead and get started with those. Be careful not to strip these screws and be careful not to lose them. Okay, and we'll go ahead and remove the rest of these. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and lift the back off of the computer. The first thing we need to do here is go ahead and lift the battery connector. That should just lift right off and we'll kind of fold it back. All right, so next up we're going to remove these three screws from the speakers and lay the speakers out of the way. Okay, these are T5 screws. We'll just lift these up and move them out of the way. Some models will have a few more screws here and here. This one only has the screw here for the battery. So we'll go ahead and take that one out of the way. The kit does come with uh, gloves and safety glasses. You wanna be sure that you're wearing those when dealing with the adhesive remover. We're gonna use about uh, 0.25 to 0.5 milliliters of the adhesive remover on each cell. We're gonna kind of insert these cards to lift them away from the MacBook Pro. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started with that. Uh, you're gonna leave the adhesive remover for a couple of minutes per cell so that it can release that adhesive and then you'll be able to pull out the old battery. Okay, so we've got the first one free here 
and I'm just gonna kind of repeat the process all the way down. And you're gonna wanna use as little of the adhesive remover as possible as you kind of move through the task here. Okay, we've given this a few seconds here. So we're gonna go ahead and slide the card underneath. All right, once you have that broken free, uh, you're just gonna go ahead and slide this card underneath the battery cells so that they don't accidentally stick back down to the MacBook. And then we're gonna move over to these outer cells here and go ahead and remove those. Okay, so once again, we're just gonna kind of place the card in between those to keep it from sticking and then we'll move to the final two battery cells. All right, about a minute has transpired, so we're gonna go ahead and kind of slice between the two of these. So you just wanna kind of cut through that adhesive. My speaker cable was kind of routed around this, but it was stuck to the battery, and I kind of had to remove it, so hopefully I didn't damage the cable. Uh, but you can see there, it was attached to the battery. Uh, but I did have to kind of gently remove that, and I'm gonna move on to the battery on the right side here. Okay, so at this point we should be able to remove the entire battery from the MacBook. So just kind of set that to the side for now. And we might as well go ahead and remove all this excess adhesive. So we use some more of that adhesive remover to remove any of the excess adhesive. I probably should open up the box for the battery earlier. It actually comes with the wrenches that you need. I have my own personal uh, screwdriver that I like because this little head twists and it makes it a whole lot easier to spin the screwdriver. But it actually comes with the ones that you need. So that was a pretty cool inclusion. But we'll go ahead and take this out of the box. All right, so really all we have left to do here is we do need to peel off the adhesive and then just lay it back down where the old battery was. So we'll go ahead and do that now. All right, and we're just going to lay this in place. All right, so we're just gonna lay this back where the old battery went. All right, so we'll just kind of give this a good firm push to hold it in place. And then we do need to reconnect the single screw there. All right, next up we're going to connect the right side speaker here. Make sure that you do route that cable underneath the metal piece. And the middle size screw is gonna go up top, the longest here, and then the shortest down bottom. So we'll go ahead and make our connections there as well. So on mine, it had this yellow Loctite on it for the top screw. And then this one had white Loctite, this one had blue Loctite. So I don't know if yours is the same, but that's how mine was. Don't know if that makes it any easier for you. Okay, we'll do the same over here on the left side speaker. We'll go ahead and reattach that. Same thing, middle side screw, longest side screw, and short screw on the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and replace the SSD. And so while I do that, I'm going to continue uh, to have the battery disconnected and then we'll move forward on this. So we do have one screw here. We'll go ahead and remove that. It's on there a little snugger. <clears throat> so do be careful not to strip it out. All right, so next up, we're just going to kind of tilt this up and remove it very gently. All right, and we'll set the old one to the side and we're just going to kind of slide this in with the heat sink facing up. So you may have to press pretty firmly to get it fully seated here. And then we're going to reattach the screw. Before we close this back up, we do want to make sure that we reseat the battery connection. Uh, so we'll just kind of line it up. And so we'll just kind of press it in place there. And then we're going to go ahead and put our cover back on. If you have some compressed air, now might be a, t a good time to get rid of some of this dust and I'm gonna have to open mine back up later. I don't have any compressed air or anything like that with me right now, uh, but we'll go ahead and put 
the back cover on. All right, and remember, our smallest screws went here and then all the other screws went around. All right, now we just need to fire it back up and reinstall our backup. All right, so from this screen, I'm going to restore from my Time Machine backup. All right, it sees my Samsung T3 and it sees my backup. And we wanna put that on the new Aura Pro X2. I did wanna mention that it's also important that we do calibrate the battery. Uh, once I have my computer restored, I'm going to fully charge the laptop and then I'm going to fully drain the laptop and then I should be good to go when it comes to uh, the battery and making sure that that is configured properly. So while this is restoring, I just wanted to mention the main reason that I decided to make this video, I don't have any experience opening up a MacBook and changing out the battery or the SSD. If I can do it, you can do it. And for just a couple hundred dollars, instead of totally replacing your Mac, you can refresh it. And this is still a seven year old MacBook. And for a few hundred dollars, I'm able to probably use this for several more years. I'm sure I can get at least 10 years out of this. Yes, it has an older processor. Um, yes, I'm not able to upgrade the RAM, but with that extra storage on my hard drive and this brand new battery, I'm easily going to be able to get several more years out of this 2013 MacBook Pro. So this is gonna be a great machine for my daughter. She'll be able to do schoolwork on here. She'll be able to start um, editing videos in Final Cut, which is pretty amazing. And of course, my wife can use this uh, to do work that she needs to get done. Uh, so we'll be able to have two MacBooks in the house. So once again, big shout outs to OWC. I'll be sure to include a link in the description of where you can pick up all the parts you need to upgrade your MacBook Pro. That about wraps it up for this video. Thanks guys for watching. Be blessed. I'll see you in the next one.